Welcome to our module on phase feeding. Phase feeding is a concept in which we look at feeding programs built around the action that's going on different parts of the lactation and gestation curve. We have elected to build this into a six phase system. On this visual you'll see they start with phase one and this is a take home message. Phase one is the beginning of the dry period. We argue that is when the real impact of lactation begins. Not when she has her calf, but when she's in the dry period. This is also known as the far off dry cow program. Some of you would call it the traditional dry cow program. It'll typically be about the first 40 to 45 days once we've got this cow dried off. We then move on quickly to phase number two, which is the close-up dry cow, the last 21 days before calving. This is the hot topic right now because this is one of the transition phase periods that many feed companies, nutritionists, and farmers are now looking at to split their dry cows into two groups. Phase three then is what we call the fresh cow phase. This is from zero to 14 days. On some farms, this is zero to seven days. Unfortunately, on some farms, it's zero to 28 days. But this is that time when the cow is moving from the close-up dry cow or dry cow phase into the lactation phase. This is the second part of the transition time period. So the first 21 days after calving and the 28 days prior to calving is usually considered the transition time period that a lot of researchers are now working on. Phase four then is uh, from 14 to 80 days after calving. On some farms, it would be 100 to 120 days. This is when peak milk would be occurring, dry matter is building, and obviously body weight losses are occurring. Phase five then is the next period from 80 to 200 days. This would be what we call the peak dry matter intake curve area. You'll see that in just a minute. At this point, cows are pretty much producing what they're consuming. On very many high producing herds, that is the last phase. Once they go from phase five, they dry them off especially with BST technology that tends to put real pressure on eliminating phase six. Phase six is a tail end phase. These are cows that are gaining body weight. These are cows that are, that are really under a non-stressed condition. So these are the six phases that we look at. Now here goes the visual that matches that very nicely. So if you can remember that last visual, here we come and depict it looking at three different curves. First curve is the white one, which is the milk production curve. And you will see that the cows will have a very typical shaped curve illustrated there, peaking out somewhere around a 40 to 70 days after calving, they will hit their peak milk. And that's what we call it peak milk. The milk yield is rapidly increasing in this phase four. Then you can see it drops off at a rather predictable level. First lactation heifers will have a very flat curve. In fact, some of the real high producing herds now in the United States, it's almost no curve at all. These heifers hit 70, 80 pounds of milk. They dry off at 70, 80 pounds of milk. Obviously, BST will change this curve a bit. So if you have this technology, your curve should show some inflection when you start injecting BST at day 60 or 70 on your strategy out there on the farm. The second curve is the dry matter intake curve, depicted here with the yellow the hatch lines, if you wish. You can see that dry matter tends to lag milk production, and that's why we call that phase five. Phase five is when we get the most groceries into those girls. And at that point, that production will be supported by the dry matter intake. And then you can see how it drops off as we get later lactation. Then we go into the third curve, which is the red dotted curve. This is the body weight loss curve. And again, you can see a totally different approach. Here you can see a rather steep and very dramatic decrease in, in the first two months, especially in this phase three, phase four. At phase five, body weight now becomes stable and hopefully is increasing back because at some point we got to get that weight back on that cow before she goes into phase one in the dry period. See, now you can grasp quickly that in a phase feeding concept, the question as the farmer, nutritionist, veterinarian, as a student, can you manipulate these curves in these various phases to optimize cow health, performance, reproduction, while maintaining modest feed costs in the program? And so if you look at phase four, for example, look at the dynamics on phase four, and then to go to the other stream, go to phase six. And in phase four, here we have a cow that's giving more milk than she eats. She's still going up. She's losing body weight. Then you come over to phase six here of a cow that is gaining weight is eating more than what she produces and as a nutritionist you would develop a totally different strategy in terms of types of feeds types of nutrients amounts of fats amounts of bypass protein in a phase four cow versus a phase six and that's the whole concept on phase feeding is to build rations that complement these three curves and make them work for you rather than controlling you a quick word about peak milk 
Some neat take-home messages. When should cows peak? Generally, 40 to 60 to 70 days after calving. Peak milk as defined as strictly volume, not fat corrected. If you bring in butter fat tests or milk fat tests, you will move that window back a bit earlier because some cows have very high butter fat tests in the first two or three weeks after calving. This would normally occur the second month on DHI tests. So we're looking, uh, if you look at your DHI tests, in fact, that's one of the assignments you can go home with uh, with this module is go home and circle on your DHI test sheet when do your cows peak, and hopefully it's sitting in the second month. Next, 200 rule, if you take and multiply peak milk times 200, that pretty much indicates the lactation potential. So if you had a 90 pound producing brown Swiss cow and she peaks at 90 pounds, multiply by 200, we expect that brown Swiss cow to produce about 18,000 pounds of milk in that lactation curve if she follows the curve. Now, if she produces 20,000 pounds of milk, then she's beat the curve, which means something happened in early lactation. If she produces 16,000 pounds of milk, she fell out of bed in mid and late lactation. She dropped off too quickly. You begin to see how we can start interpreting some of this information. The last bulleted item comes from the University of Minnesota. They developed a guideline looking at the relationships of peak milk between first lactation or heifers to older cows, and that number should be approximately 75%. So if you go home and look at your herd, and let's say your first lactation Jersey heifers, they peaked as a group at 66 pounds of milk. All the other older Jersey cows in the herd averaged 85. To make this calculation then, you would take the 85 pounds of peak milk from older cows, divide that into the 66, and that gives you a value of about 77 to 78%, which means that they are peaking, the heifers are peaking actually higher relative to the older cows. And that is good news because it means that the heifers are actually doing a better job and these heifers will become mature cows hopefully in the next two or three lactations. However, there could be some bad news here. It could mean the old cows aren't doing well because of mastitis, environment, they can't walk, whatever those factors are. And so the heifers aren't superstars. The old cows are a bunch of duds. So you've got to be very careful with this 75% rule because either one of the numbers that are influenced up or down can really change or shift the calculation. The other part of that equation is persistency. It's good to get the cow to peak high, but then the question is, can you keep her there? These numbers come from Ken Nordlin at the vet school at Wisconsin and some DHI data that says first lactation cows typically drop about 6% a month, which means that if a cow is in her fourth month of lactation and she's a heifer giving 60 pounds of milk, 30 days later we'd expect her to drop 6% of the 60 pounds, which would be about 3.6 pounds, so that would be normal. If you look at some heifers and they drop five or six pounds per month, the red light should go on and ask, what's happened? Are these heifers now partitioning nutrients into growth? Uh, are they partitioning it due to some hormonal shift due to pregnancy? You certainly have to ask those kinds of questions, or maybe they just don't get their chance at the feed bunk. Older cows drop about 9% a month. Now remember, they peaked 25% higher, so you have a different shape lactation curve, but they will drop about 9% a month after the peak milk production. What's really interesting, when you get out about 250 days and beyond, these curves will cross, which means the first lactation heifers in late lactation produce as much or more milk than older cows. And remember, these heifers still may be growing, smaller body size, therefore they have potential, less dry matter intake potential. Can you see some strategies coming at you when when you build a ration for those type of animals. This visual is extremely busy, but boy, what a powerful, a powerful one to look at. Let's walk through this and tell you what you have. You have milk production profiles for Holsteins. Where did it come from? It came from Midwest DHIA data, summarized in 1993. That's pre-BST. Now that's important. So it says the numbers you have on your chart do not have the impact of bovine somatotropin on it. Then you have, going across from left to right, milk yield. So you have two different profiles. What should this number look like if I got a 19,000 pound Holstein herd, which is fairly typical for our DHI records here in the Midwest, versus some of our higher elite, high profitable herds at 23,000 pounds of milk. Next, we have this broken down by three different lactation numbers. First lactation heifers, second lactation, third plus. Why second lactation? The word sophomore slump. If for some reason we have pushed heifers so hard that they have a problem in the next lactation, it should jump right out at us on line or lactation number two. Again, you have it here listed for two different levels of production. The next line over is peak milk production. So this will tell us, well, if I have a 23,000 pound herd average, my first lactation heifers, if they are normal for the Midwest, 
they should peak at about 75 pounds of milk. This is normal. This is what we would expect. And you can see then as you go to second and third lactation cows, this number goes up to 97 and 104. These are the benchmarks. These are the targets. This is what's normal. This is what you and I might say is right. You can see the 19,000 pound herd average, all these numbers are down a click or two. So it gives us an idea of the roadmap. Where are we going? What should we look for? So if we're at 19,000, if I'm going to get to 21,000 or 23,000, what type of peak milks do I have to achieve? Because remember, peak milk sets the lactation curve. Then we have those cows that are less than 50 days in milk. We call that the fresh cow phase. So if we had a bad transition diet, this would be picked up at this point, and now we got the benchmarks to compare where you should be with a 23,000-pound herd in the first 50 days as measured on DHI. Now be careful for some of us with small herd sizes. These numbers can really get skewed. I may only have two fresh cows that are in the first lactation, and they're fresh eight days or 10 days, right after when the supervisor can grab them. And so this this number could be skewed because remember, 30 days later, this cow is still going to be in that block. So this number can really jump around. So keep an eye on how many cows you have in that block. And most of our record keeping programs will tell you the number of cows in there. So herds that are less than 100 cows, we really split these cows up in a lot of different kind of groupings when you have three lactation groupings and five or six across the top. Then you can see the next phase, 50 to 100. That would reflect our early lactation phase we just talked about. Then we've got from 1 to 200. There's your peak production phase. And then late lactation cows from 2 to 300 and beyond. So suddenly now we have data that matches our phase feeding program. And we can ask, are they normal for the production that I'm at? And if there's a shift occurring, is it good news? In other words, if that number is higher or lower, will tell us perhaps where that group of cows or the, that herd average is going to be. What a power powerful set of data to do some detective work on the farm. Well, let's see how sharp we really are. On this visual, what we did is simply took uh, Holstein profiles and looked at four different levels of milk production, 17, 19, 21, 23,000 pounds of milk. So we got rid of all that other data to make it easy to see. And on the bottom, we have a case study. You have been called to the farm, and this is the profile on case study A. The peak milk is 58 pounds of milk. And the fresh cows, they averaged 53 in that module or that time period we're looking at. In early lactation, they're at 57. In one to 200 days, at peak phase, they're at 57. In late lactation, they're at 55. Well, is that good or bad news? Well, the power we have now is we go back and we say, well, if the heifers peak at 58 pounds of milk, what type of a herd average would expect to be associated with that? And looking at our chart, we can see that's about a 17,000 pound herd average. That's the kind of peak milk we're getting. Is that good or bad? Well, let's go to the next step. In the first 50 days, it looks like we're at 53 pounds for this case study, and that still is a 17,000 pound herd average. So you and I would say, well, certainly these heifers are sitting in a 17,000 pound herd, right? Well, sure enough, in the next 50 days, we still are there with our 57 pounds of milk. But now look what happens. Once we get beyond the first 100 days, these heifers don't drop their 6%. They're flat off sitting right there at 57, and they have actually moved up to a 19,000 pound herd average. So the bad the news is it took us 100 days to get there, but we finally got heifers milking like they're in a 19,000 pound herd average. And then, of course, we go to the tail end lactation, and look, those heifers are still up over 50 pounds of milk at 55, and they're actually behaving like a 21,000 pound type herd. So as a detective, a lot of things come to mind. The, the obvious one is this farmer started using BST somewhere around 100 days, and as a result, shifted the lactation curve. Or these heifers really had a terrible time transitioning and took 100 days to get squared away and finally got caught up. Or these heifers finally discovered how to eat at the feed bunk and therefore they found their spot, they found their place and at 100 days they really start eating dry matter intakes that could maintain and support 50 pounds of milk. We literally have these heifers capped off at less than 60 pounds of milk. That could be diet, that could be environment, could be cow comfort, could be cow health, could be metabolic disorder. You see all the excitement but the point is we have identified in this case study A that something is going on that changes at day 100. And as a detective, you have to ask, what happened? Can we explain it? And can we correct it? Now, if it's BST, that's pretty straightforward. But it's one of these other factors, certainly it changes. Well, let's look at another profile. Here is case study B. Again, we have that same format. We stayed with the same lactation number because obviously uh, we're a little more comfortable of seeing these same numbers rather than changing all the numbers on you. Well, here's case study B. Go to old Bravo. 
We can see that these cows are peaking at 70 pounds of milk. In the first 50 days, they are staying at 70 pounds of milk. And then 50 to 100, they're at 66, 56, and 43, respectively. Well, let's do the profile. Let's see what kind of shifting of curves are we seeing. Well, on peak milk, they're at about 21,000 pound herd average. That's pretty good. We're going to make some money with these first lactation cows. They're behaving like that in a herd average. Boy, the first 50 days, they come out like gangbusters. Look at that. They're off my chart. They're in excess of a 23,000 pound rolling herd average. They're really doing very, very well in the in the first 50 days. But then look what happens. There's a, a stair step effect. Unfortunately, we're going down the stairs, not up the stairs. And these cows are dropping down to a 21,000, a 19,000, 17,000 pound herd average. These cows have really fallen out of bad. Well, the question is, what do we do? Well, we certainly want to ask, why didn't these cows peak like they should? It looks like they come out of the box very well. So that probably means, hopefully, the dry cow program is not a real handicap. We don't want to write that off, though. But we probably wouldn't look there first to see what's going on. But certainly, they drop very, very quickly. One thing that I would quickly come to mind, we have literally melted these cows off the first 50, 80 days. We've melted them down. There is no body reserve there. And as a result, production mimics dry matter intake. That would be a very easy scenario. But there could be such things as herd health, somatic cell, as we mentioned in the previous case study that could be occurring, but a certainly a totally different kind of profile that you and I have to dig in and ask what's going on negatively in this case in the last 100 days, and boy, they come out of the box like gangbusters. Man, wouldn't it be neat if we could keep them up in that 70-pound window in range? Another number that you will have on some of our record systems, especially on DHI, will be some type of a corrected milk value. It may be called management level milk, M. LM abbreviated. You'll see that on some DHI reports. Other reports will call it 150-day milk, which means it's corrected to 150 days. What this neat tool has done is says if I took every cow in your herd and measured them exactly on the 150th day in milk, and every cow was a second lactation cow, and every cow had a 3-7 butter fat test. And by the way, that can jump around from different labs and different centers, so be sure you check to see what they're correcting the component to, and had a 3.2% milk protein test. If every cow was there, what would that number be? This corrects or uncovers, if you wish, reproductive problems. Because if you have cows that are out a 230 days in milk, you know that the bulk tank is going to be down. So it corrects for that kind of a problem when we have a lot of late lactation cows. It also will show us uh, if we have a lot of heifers. It'll pick that up and say, wow, if these were all old, somewhat older cows, what they would do. If there's a component effect going on. If I come in and make a change, I put in some more bypass protein. I come in and go to another feeding out there in the TMR. If I come in with BST, this number will be picked up because we are changing the shape of the lactation curve or the level of milk production or the component the cow is getting. What a powerful tool because it lets us look at it slightly different than looking at, at rolling herd average or looking at the current production that's going in the bulk tank and a correct or some of these other noise that's going on in a herd. So in summary, Wow, what excitement you have using these lactation curves and looking at it on our phase feeding system. Because we can spot such things as, if I'm at 19,000, does it match? Does the profile where I'm currently at fit, especially when we look at the different uh, lactation and phase of the lactation curve? Number two, when does peak milk occur? That should be in that 50 to 100 day window, based on the summaries that we saw in the last couple of case studies. We can look at lactation curves for first, second, and third, so we can ask, you know, are these typical lactation Lactation, we know the heifer has a much flatter curve than older cows. We can look at that and ask, is it natural? Is it normal? Is it right or is it wrong? Uh, what are the young cows doing? This is your future herd in one or two years, three years. How are they doing? Are they going to be better than the older cows? Can we find some weak links? Do they fall out of bed at day 100? Do they really come smoking at day 200? Do we have a peak milk problem? Uh, another point is, is, gee, I'm going to use BST. Uh, this should really pick up the BST, especially in the month when you add that and look at the new injected cows or any other factor which could include something in terms of a nutritional change or something in cow environment or certainly something in the herd health window. And of course, the impact of group changing, uh, moving cows from one group to another, uh, you should be able to pick this up, especially with some of our new software programs that allow you to curve cows individually or by groups of cows, by days of milk, by level production. Wow, just turn these computers loose or get your pencil out at night and do some circling and highlighting with your magic markers to see where are the weak links. And if you've got some good news this month or some bad news coming next year, this will really tell it for us. Well, that concludes this module. Thanks. Have a good day.